we have a really, really weird, creepy, strange, I don't even know the right word for it, story coming out of Baltimore. So Huffington Post explains here. A neo-Nazi is representing the Baltimore Police Department in a lawsuit claiming officers fabricated evidence in order to send a black man to jail for a murder he didn't commit, according to an investigation by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Glenn Keith Allen, who works in the Baltimore City Law Department, is a longtime supporter of the neo-Nazi National Alliance, the report says. He is now defending the city in a 2015 lawsuit filed by Sabine Burgess, who was imprisoned for 19 years before being released and having the charges dismissed. The Southern Poverty Law Center has financial records dating back to 2002 that appear to prove Allen is deeply involved with neo-Nazi groups. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, now understand, in the U.S., as I'm sure my entire audience understands, but perhaps some people, you know, overseas don't understand, um, it, it's perfectly legal to be a loathsome human being. <laughs> so you could be a neo-Nazi, you could be a, you know, extreme white supremacist, you could be a fundamentalist Muslim, you could be a fundamentalist Christian, you know, the list goes on and on. You could be as extreme as you want, as long as you're not calling for direct threats of violence, you, you have a right to be that. But in this case, what's the issue? The issue isn't that he believes these things, which is an issue in and of itself, just not a legal issue. The issue is he works for the Baltimore City Law Department and he's an avowed neo-Nazi. Guys, he, they go on to explain here, like he's so into this shit that he's ordered Holocaust denier DVDs. He's gotten into Holocaust denier conventions. He is a raging anti-Semite, a racist, and a white supremacist. And he's representing the Baltimore Police Department. Now, we say that, and I'm surprised. I'm sure a lot of you guys are surprised. But the reality is, we just covered the, the Department of Justice report on Baltimore. And what did we learn? We learned that in the case of Baltimore, so I'm not going to generalize about all police and all police departments because that wouldn't be fair or true, but in the case of Baltimore, man, it was fucking systemic, it was systematic, it was... They were openly bigoted. <laughs> I mean, there were so many instances. Uh, one officer getting cited 175 times for using excessive force. There was no punishment. Uh, the N-word flying around with impunity. And nobody was like, hey, maybe this is a problem and this shows that perhaps we're biased and maybe we aren't giving black people a fair shot. They had, in fact, that's been proven in the numbers. It went unnecessary stops. Unnecessary stops that violate the Fourth Amendment and they just did it with black people endlessly. Endlessly. And some insanely low percentage of those things found anything. So they're just harassing the black community. And then there were specific instances of, you know, one officer saying to a black kid, uh, you know, basically, I'll be your George Zimmerman. Like, why don't you go ahead and put on a hoodie and walk through my town and see what happens? So, guys, it, it, it was a system of open, oppressive racism and police occupation. You know, officers saying... The whole point of this is you got to be the baddest motherfucker out there. Not, hey, look, protect and serve. These are your people. You know, it, it was basically like Alonzo from Training Day. This is what we're here for. When we do it, we are by definition right because we're the law, bitch. So, uh, unbelievable findings in the report. Now we know the problem's even worse. You got neo-Nazis fucking representing you and they're kind of open about their neo-Nazism. You can be a free citizen and believe these grotesque things. You don't have a right to a government job where you're supposed to be fair and objective and equal and do equal protection under the law of all races. So that should be obvious. Now, you know, upon reading this article, I, I remembered, oh, didn't we do a story not that long ago of white supremacists infiltrating uh, police departments all across the country? And then I remembered, yeah, indeed we did. 
And there are countless examples of it. In fact, in 2006, the FBI released a report and they were like, uh, we got a problem here. The problem is the KKK infiltrating many police departments in the South. Now, again, I want to be crystal clear. All cops aren't the problem. In fact, I'm sure most cops are actually good people just doing the right thing. But are there some bad cops who do horrendous actions and who are biased up front and who are parts a, a, a part of terrorist groups like the KKK? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. You go into some rural Alabama or Mississippi town or whatever the fuck. The, the reports say that. And, and not me saying that. It's the FBI. It's other... Specific instances and stories, we covered a specific one about the KKK infiltrating um, uh, the prison guard system in certain states. That's not okay, man. That's not fucking okay. That's not okay. So, I mean, step one, if you want to talk about police reform, is you fire all these motherfuckers. Again, you have a right to be a loathsome human being and a racist or a fundamentalist or whatever the fuck you want to be. You don't have a right to a job where that ideology can poison your ability to do your job right. So let's be clear about that. But yeah, step number one, fire them. Fire them. Get new people in there. And then step two is you chain, you do genuine policy reform where you, I would mandate body cameras for all police officers and make them on the entire time. Studies show police officers are much less likely to do a fucked up thing up front when they know they're being recorded. It's not foolproof, but it helps big time. Um, and you know, you do stuff like change the training. Uh, and these are... These are things that help towards de-escalation, help towards uh, fixing the problem between the community and the police, and you end the drug war, which takes away about 50% at least of the police occupation and the feeling of otherization and us versus them and the tribalism. And these things would help a lot, but I mean, really, 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 step one, in fact, step fucking zero, step point oh one, whatever the fuck you want to call it, is, I don't know, get rid of the neo-Nazis and the KKK people in the departments? Call me crazy? 